Hello. I'm Grace Vandervliet, the Curator for Museum Teaching and Learning at the University of Michigan Museum of Art. Hi, I'm Lisa Borgsdorf. I'm the Manager of Public Programs at UMA, and I'm currently studying to become a certified yoga instructor. My colleague Lisa and I typically share an office inside, but today we're virtually experiencing some space and engaging with UMA's monumental sculpture collection. At each stop, we'll discuss a bit about the object's form and then offer a yoga pose as a way of interacting with the sculpture. As we know at this time, one of the things that we can do to take care of ourselves is get outside and move our bodies. So I hope you enjoy. We're looking at Orion by Mark DeSuvero, who's known for large-scale metal sculptures. We often discuss artists' tools, and his are cranes and backhoes. DeSuvero was born in Shanghai, China, but emigrated to San Francisco, and he references passing under the Golden Gate Bridge as a seminal moment in his memory. This sculpture was recently restored and repainted and purchased by the museum as part of our permanent collection. Orion has become an iconic landmark in Ann Arbor and also part of our institutional identity. Its form is really angular and bright and it provides sharp contrast to the blue sky on a sunny day. In terms of form, it's really fun to find as many letters of the alphabet as you can. Like X and K are kind of gimmies, but there are others like with the circle and if you look at the form and the shadow, it's really fun to see how many letters you can find. This sculpture is full of triangles, so we're going to do Utita Trikonasana, or Extended Triangle Pose. So spread your feet wide apart and bring your arms to a T. Rotate your right foot out, look over your right fingertips, and now tip your right hand out and down, touching your foot, ankle, or shin, and wave your left arm to the sky. And if you can, look up at your left fingertips. Inhale, and on an exhale, look down, and on an inhale, come up, and switching over to the left side, so point your left toes out, look over your left fingertips, tip out and down, bringing your right hand to the sky and looking at your right hand if it's comfortable for your neck. And on an exhale, look down, and on an inhale, come up. Sculptor Beverly Pepper passed away very recently at the age of 97. She was not only a sculptor, she made prints and 2D work as well. And it's interesting to compare the similarities between her abstract work, even though it's such a different media. She was an American but lived most of her life in Italy. She was the first American to use Corten steel before Richard Serra. And when she attended Pratt University, it was decided she wasn't capable of working machinery because she was a woman. But then she was approached um, by the steel company to use this material, new material, and she really started to work it um, in unique ways. Steel is naturally weather resistant and it creates surfaces that oxidize. Beverly Pepper capitalized on that, creating this rough textured surface, which is sensory and tactile, and it captures light and shadow to make it look like cake frosting. The shape has this strong pyramidal base, and then there's a triangle stacked on top of that, and a circle and another inverted triangle as people, we want to anthropomorphize objects, and it's easy to do that with this, but it's also fun to just see it as simple shapes all together. This sculpture by Beverly Pepper makes me think of a strong warrior. So let's do a warrior pose, Vira Bhadrasana A, or Warrior One. This standing pose is named after a mythological Hindu warrior, Vira Bhadra. Okay, so spread your feet wide apart, Turn your right foot out and your left foot in slightly so that both your hips face forward over your right leg. Bend your right knee deeply while also pushing down through your left foot, heel to the ground. Bring your arms over your head, palms to touch, making a triangle shape. If your shoulders are tight, you can just raise your arms straight in the air. 
and take a deep breath. Now keeping your arms where they are, straighten your leg and swivel around to face the other direction and bend your left knee for warrior one on the left side and take a deep breath here. We're looking at Stiff Box Number 12 by Lucas Samaras. It's created out of Corten steel, which weathers in rain and sun to create this somewhat unified rusty color. If we look closely at the form, there's a clear split down the center axis. The right half is jagged and pointy, and the left half is organic and curvy. What makes this sculpture work in front of a light wall is that interaction of the positive and negative spaces. Just like dark letters stand out on a white page, these forms pop out against the background. It makes me want to stick my hand in the holes and prick my finger on the sharp edges. But what is the sculpture about? Part of the subject is how these two parts meet. In the center, we see a box that's partially split open it seems that it's being pulled apart like a Pandora's box, emitting chaos but also possibility. Visitors often put notes or small little objects in the box, and it's interesting to check it occasionally to see what treasures have been hidden. Stiff Box 12 is full of angles and curves, so it made me think of Reverse Warrior, a pose where your lower body is in a lunge angles, and your upper body is in an arching backbend, curves. Okay, so spread your feet wide apart, turn your right foot out, your left foot is perpendicular to your right. Bend your right knee deeply, and bring your arms to a T. Root into your left foot. Knee is directly over your ankle, or behind it, and pointing in the same direction as your toes. Your knee should never be forward of your toes. Now look up and wave your right hand to the sky, lifting your chin and chest for a nice arch in the upper back. Your left arm can extend down your left thigh or wrap behind your back. If it's more comfortable, you can look at your left hand. And inhale. And exhale. Now straighten your right knee and swivel around to face left. Bring your arms down back to a T and bend your left knee rooting through your right foot and wave your left hand to the sky coming to an arch in the opposite direction right arm can be down your thigh or behind your back. And breathe deeply here. This group of three sculptures are created by Michelle Oka Donor, an artist who creates not only sculpture, but chairs, tables, and floors. At UMA, we're particularly proud of her because she's an alumna of University of Michigan. We have other works by her in the collection, and she's created a beautiful terrazzo floor at the Children's Hospital. She's extremely versatile, and yet has this recognizable style that's connected to nature, either through content or her craggy forms. She's influenced by the sea, and often her work contains shells, driftwood, or references to life in the water, specifically the natural environment around her native Miami. She says, it was a place that fascinated and nurtured me with the forces of nature, the dramatic thunderstorms, and the extraordinary light. Neptune is the Roman god of the sea, and he had this reputation for being furious and angry. The sea storms and waves reflect his outbursts and his violent temper. So Angry Neptune is the title of one of these three sculptures, which all look like they could have emerged from the ocean, headless beings dripping in seaweed. So Michelle Okadoner finds her inspiration from natural elements, but the environment and placement are important to all outdoor sculptures. These sculptures live in a shady grove on the east side of the museum. They're nestled among trees, 
And to get close, you need to take a little detour off the sidewalk and into the wood chips. And you're also welcome to explore them from up close. The surface of these sculptures by Michelle Okadoner look like the bark of an old tree to me. So we are going to do tree pose. Okay, so stand up tall. Bring your hands to your hips and get strong in your legs. Shift your weight into your right foot and bring your left foot above or below your right knee. Don't bring it to your knee. The sole of your foot should be resting against your inner thigh or shin. Your hands can be in prayer position in front of your heart, or if you have your balance, you can extend them over your head in a V-shape and take a deep breath here. On an exhale, bring your hands back to your hips and your left foot back down next to your right and shift your weight into your left leg, bringing your right foot above or below your left knee. Hands can be to prayer or in a V-shape above your head and breathe deeply here. And on an exhale, release your right foot to the ground and bring your hands back to prayer. Good job. Mm -hmm. 